All right, here in my hometown, Sacramento, California, me and my father, my pops, are going fishing today. Enjoy. Is that the gate supposed to be open, Dad? Welcome to California, son. Park at Swabies and walk over there. You guys know how deep it is right here? 12, probably. Oh, 12, nice. Do you happen to know any spots around here to put a boat in besides the... The deep water, well, the Sacramento River specifically or in one of these rivers right around here? Just this spot. I'm trying to get to this spot with a boat without using this ramp. Um, you mean, okay, so the, there's another launch right, uh, right over there. Yeah. On the other side, on the Yolo side, so all the Sacramento stuff's closed. Right down there, it's called Elkhorn Regional Park. Yeah. Elkhorn boat launch something or whatever. But Elkhorn Regional Park's 1.8 miles that way and you can get there. Cool, that's an epic advice. Thank you, man. Maybe you'll see me over here in a boat and I was successful. Hope so. Thanks. So the fisherman over there said that uh he said all the Sacramento side boat ramps are closed. But if you go down the road to the Elkhorn uh community park, it's on the Yolo side. The Yolo side and that we might be able to get in. Okay. I really hope that's true, because that'd be really rad. We have to tie it up around those poles over there and work on it, try to get it started. Check out my sonar unit, Dad. Check it out. I built the box myself. Nice. Looks pretty sturdy too. Nice. Should be able to find some big fish with that. <laughs> nice. Okay, all I need to do now is test my battery, get Mika life jackets, uh, fishing poles ready, we should be good, and we gotta put it in the water. Emergency or hopefully we don't need it. Just one? Just one. I guess we could use this if we had to. Hopefully we don't have to. Yeah. It's gonna be hot, we're gonna get sunburned really quick. Hats? Yeah. Father, I present you. Nice. With a juke life jacket. All right. Whatever you do, don't pull that orange cord. Okay. Good girl, Minx. Safety first, girly. Father, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing starts. Take two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey. Push the choke in now. Took half.
Oh yeah, my old lady's Mercury started. <laughs> All right, my next step is turn on my sonar. Good girl. Okay. Got full battery here. Sit down, Meeks. Good girl. Bring it up a little bit. There you go. All right, I'm gonna phone a friend. You guys probably know this friend. Hello. Hey man. Hey, what's up? You know that Sacramento case I was telling you about? Uh, yes. First boat ramp uh, closest to her last known location, I believe I have a car. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, Are you on the water right now? Yeah, with my dad. We, I mean, we just started, we were going to go fishing and I was like, let's just clear this boat ramp real quick. and. Yeah. Here we are. All right, so what you're going to do is make sure you got the general idea of where that's at. And once you start seeing it on that sonar, have your dad drop that bag immediately right behind your sonar. Yeah. Do you have a second to pull up the text I sent you and take put eyes on what I saw? Yeah, give me a second. The assembly car. Oh, <laughs> just from your first view? Well, I just watched the video. It looks right, right? I mean, I I saw wheels on it. It's it's right where I, right where I thought it would be. What river are you in? Sacramento River, and they just had a crazy winter, a flood. Sacramento River gets nasty, nasty. It gets all the flow off the mountains. Well, um, yeah, you're just gonna have to just keep on it. Um, if it doesn't stick, then. I mean, you'll just have to dive it. You'll just have to put it right beside it, kind of. It's fast, fast river. Cool, man. Thanks for your help. Later. Okay, bye. Jacob says, just checking out what I sent him. He said, definitely a car. Which I agree. All right, we are now going to try to magnet this vehicle. We've had a couple failed attempts. Uh, but we're gonna make it happen. Should be right under us. Let's just keep doing this until we snag it. Just make sure you're on the bottom. I'll know if it snags. Huh? I'll know if it snags. Yeah, it'll stick. All right, we're gonna drag the shore going in. So the reason why we're not using this Garmin system right now is because that Garmin system is actually a duplicate side imaging uh, of the Hummingbird. The Hummingbird is also a better unit. Um, in order for, to get my live Im imaging to work for the Garmin, I need to upgrade uh, to the live scope transducer. I don't have it yet. It costs about 1600 bucks. But that would be saving us a lot of time right now.
motor's, motor's, motor's smoking. Is it? It's getting hot, huh? Oh no. Okay, so we need to we need to order that side of the river. We gotta use the river current in our favor. So hand me the ore is there. Are we gonna go back to the truck? Yeah, I didn't that didn't look good. We'll load up the boat and diagnose it. Call this in. Show them the image I have. I'll put the I'll get the image set up on my uh, laptop so it's nice and clear. And then we'll drive back over here to meet the friend. Okay. And then uh, the trolling motor doesn't work at all. The trolling motor needs a battery. I don't okay. have a battery. For it. Yeah, I need a new motor. <laughs> live scope and a trolling battery. All right. We haven't even gone fishing yet. I mean, isn't a car at the edge of a boat ramp something to be noted of? Or do you just say, oh, it's just a car? All right, I think what this episode needs is a little positive energy. I'm running a little low on fumes. So a Bob Ross positive energy will get me through this next couple minutes to get back to the boat ramp. Cheers. All right, that boat ramp's gonna come up quick, so somehow we need to get to the other side of the river. We gotta get to the other side of the river and let the current work for us, so. I don't know if this current's gonna let us do that. This feels like my first episode. I feel like I'm at the gym. Good girl, me. It's been a great fishing trip, though. <laughs> had well, a couple strikes. I had some nice cold iced tea. A few snacks. Mika's had a great time on the water. Is that true, Meeks? The weather ready. has been absolutely perfect. Did you have some of this positive energy? Is that what happened? That's right. <laughs> One sip later, Dad's super positive. No, this is the oil, Dad. Yeah, you put the oil in with the gas. It's 50 50. Unless you got a Honda engine. That's why I asked you, you gotta put oil in the gas. Did that come with the with the boat? Yeah, it came with the boat. Yeah, so it doesn't run on straight gas. That's why it got hot. You burnt it, you burn it up. So how do I fix it? Can I just add some of this? I don't know, it might be too late. So our goal is to get across this river and then let the current take us down river. Like those logs, right? And you better buy me a cold beer of Swabies. <laughs> I'm not talking just any beer, I'm talking chicken strips, <laughs> french fries. All right. Ah. Shut him down. The boat floats. What else are the positives around here? Uh, the motor started. Uh, my side imaging and live scope found a car. And at least we're upstream and we can get back to our, our car. Here we are again, Meeks. Using this damn oar. I still think that, you know, it's just a little little burning of the oil, no big deal. Because that gas tank did have gas in it when I bought it. So the gas we added today, Dad, was only three or four gallons. Two gallons. 
So no way we, we ruined it by not adding oil, I hope. We should try to get it running again though on shore. I mean, when we get to the dock, if we make it there. If we make it there, <laughs> if we make it there. But yeah, like you said, if we, if we miss this boat ramp, there's no other boat ramps till Discovery. And that's closed, we know that's closed. We'll, we'll end up going under that gold bridge from this morning, <laughs> right? Pretty much. So right above us, we have a bird nest of some kind. What kind of birds are those, Father? Looks like a crane. All right, the, the motor cooled a little bit. We're gonna give it a shot. Throw it in neutral. Choke out. Go, 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 go. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah. Sounds like it's out of oil though. You might burn it up. We're almost there, it's just around the corner. Let's go home, Gurley. Let's go home. Didn't catch any fish, but uh, found something on our first boat ramp. Oh, we had a really great time though. The weather was perfect, and the boat was having a few difficulties, but everything went pretty well. It was a good test day for the boat. We figured out that the hummingbird unit works flawlessly. Side imaging and down imaging, great. I do need to upgrade my Garmin um, transducer, which would be really useful for what we're trying to do. Um, I also need better magnets and I need to make sure my boat is tuned up before I hit the water. Uh, that could have been not fun if we didn't have a motor to get back uh, to the boat ramp. But the good news is we did find something. So that, that's kind of where we're leaving this episode uh, as a part one, uh, trying to figure out what to do next. I am dive certified, however, I do not have my own equipment yet. I have masks, fins, uh, but I don't have a BCD or tanks or stuff like that. So I'd have to team up with some kind of dive unit here or maybe rent gear in order to dive this, but we do need to magnet it and lock onto it uh, so a diver can go down to that object safely, um, which we, weren't, we were unable to do today. Plus the river's too high and it's too swift right now. There's really strong currents. The river's normally about 10 to 15 feet. Right, right now it's 20 or 30 feet. So. Especially for a beginner like me I don't want to put myself at risk uh, trying to do everything so the next step of this is we are going to make some calls figure out how to get some resources for this case and uh, I do have a meeting with uh, Christina's uh, friend uh, right now here in a couple minutes I feel bad though uh, meeting with the friend because I'm not really sure what to tell her I'm just gonna tell her what I know show her the image and say to be continued I guess um, but that's not really one of, what I wanted to do was give her false hope or, uh, you know, keep her up at night thinking that we solved the case when I don't know. Yeah, so, it's a big river. There's a lot of traffic. It could be any car. That it could be any a car. It could be a stolen, stolen car. car. We'd say it's a big car. city, Sacramento, and this is under a bridge, you know. Right. Um, so I wish I, I had more, more information for her, but I'm just going to have to give her what I got. The girl missing is Christine Anderson with a K, and then her friend is named Christine with a C. Um, so we're gonna meet her friend and go from there. All right. New tonight at 11, a search for a missing woman with mental health issues. The mother of 40-year-old Christine Anderson says it's been weeks since she's heard from her daughter who is bipolar. Still holding out hope that Christine Anderson is okay. 
and we'll call home soon. Christine Anderson is 5'3 and weighs around 120 pounds with blue eyes and blonde hair. Anyone with information on her whereabouts can call the San Diego Police Department. Hey there. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm Josh. Josh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So this way, so that object that I showed you uh, will be uh, in between these two pillars, between uh, that corner and the pillar, straight out about 50 to 100 feet. Oh, yeah. uh, right where a vehicle would be. And if they rolled it on here, it would just roll out. Correct. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance it is another... But, I mean, like, it, it's also hard to get dimensions on this. Right, to see exactly how big it is. Just the squared off... second episode I'm not sure if we'll be tomorrow uh, but maybe here in the next couple days or a couple weeks we're gonna uh, figure out what kind of vehicle that is and if it is as just a stolen vehicle we're gonna continue scanning all the way up to where her boat uh, was parked and get to the bottom of this cold case um. a quick after credit update so at dinner I was able to get a hold of an organization called DART, based out of Sacramento, they're the Drowning Accident Rescue Team. Um, and I asked if they could be a resource in diving this vehicle to identify uh, if it's a new vehicle, the one we're looking for or not. They said that they are aware of possibly three vehicles being at this location, which is great. Um, but it doesn't really give us any answers to if this is the vehicle that we're looking for or not. Uh, I was able to call Christine, uh, who you saw earlier, and tell her that information and say, hey, um, you know, there's still a lot of factors that go into whether or not this is the vehicle we need it to be um, or not. Um, however, one thing I am taking away from this day one searching with my dad is that uh, I was able to find a vehicle with my unit. Um, once I start practicing more, getting my sonar dialed in, uh, I'll be able to really um, get better at this. And I'm not, I'm not claiming to be an expert. Um, I'm still learning and I'm trying to help in the best way possible and trying to use my skills and what I've learned in the last couple of years to um, make a difference. So just bear with me on that, that there is a learning curve in all of this and I'm trying to be um, I'm trying to be as respectful as I can to these families and not you know just come out here trying to make content trying to you know make a spectacle out of this I'm trying to actually help um, and what needs to happen is I need to get some time on the water I need to practice on vehicles I need to uh, really uh, get my boat um, dialed in with with what needs to happen and that way I can be as efficient as possible um, just wanted to give you that quick update as I'm closing out this episode and I'm still figuring out if I can uh, partner with somebody tomorrow to come back and try to dive this vehicle. Um, Dart didn't seem like they were interested in diving it. They were like, oh yeah, we know about it. Uh, which doesn't put my mind at ease. It's like, do you know what kind of car it is? Do you know what license plate it is? No? Okay, well then it's still on my to-do list. Um, so I'm putting my own resources together and Nick, uh, Nick Rin said that if I can't find some, if I can't find somebody to dive it, uh, that he can come down at the end of the month and help me clear this vehicle, which will be great. So there's a plan B there in the works. Uh, sorry about the crazy audio, I'm under a freeway. Uh, but with that said, I'm closing up this episode. Uh, this is Josh Cantu here in my hometown, Sacramento. And uh, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, see you later. Weird.
Hey, it's Josh. Hi. Hey, I just sent you a pin drop. Which okay. I think is the spot where her boat was parked. Yeah. Or where his boat was parked. Oh, okay. Which is way down the road from where you guys thought it was. Um, but I found. Oh wow! All the way down to Riego. I found the pillars, and I found the boats in the photo, and the river turns to the left. Cute. And down here, there's areas where cars private. It's like privately owned land, but cars could get down to the river bank. It does look kind of sketch for me to be walking around or anything, just like trespassing kind of wise. Uh, but just so it's in your yes. mind that I yes. think our search area just got larger. Yeah, interesting because that definitely is, I mean, further up towards the casino. I would say 75% sure that this is the spot where that photo was taken. And I would put my drone in the air and try to get the perspective of um, that photo because I could do it with my drone. It's just it's a no-fly zone for the airport. Passing, passing along what I'm finding. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to drive out there tomorrow and check that area out. Perfect. Okay, awesome. I got to get my baby to bed. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Okay, bye.